Who am I? My pops was a wrestler. I got fast-tracked and ramped up the card incredibly quickly by the WWE in no small part due to my family name. I've got the personality of drying paint with the monotone, boring-ass promos to match. I've been consistently pounded and forced into the top spot and down people's throats for years. Getting any ideas? I have a catalog of forgettable feuds and overrated ass matches. I have a history of helping to end the momentum of others. I can't be an interesting baby face to save my damn life. And every time they try to force me into that spot, it's only obvious just how one dimensional I really am. I'm on the top of the WWE during a time of declining business that I'm certainly in no small part contributing to. I don't move a lot of merch because why would people buy my merch? It's not any good. Yet all the while, I'm someone that large swaths of the hardcore wrestling fan base defend, even though they know I absolutely suck. Who am I? Now, of course, naturally, your first answer would be, well, (laughs) there's only one Viper that he could be talking about. That perfectly describes Randall Keith Orton. And yes, technically, that is true. But I do this exercise to prove a point. And you see the title of the video. And oh yeah, it's true. All of these things absolutely apply to Randy Orton. Just like they absolutely apply to Charlotte Flair. What the hell is the difference here? If anything, you could say Charlotte Flair is the even more overhyped dollar store version of Randall Keith Orton. Her poppy was a wrestler, an even bigger star, so she's been fast-tracked for years, pounded down your throats incessantly. Her promos are god-awful, monotone, boring as shit. She's got the personality of paint drying. People try to sit there and make her out to be some charismatic individual, but she's not physically shit. You would even say there might be some similarities between the two of them. She has forgettable feuds and overrated ass matches, and sometimes when you put her in big spots and big matches, she underwhelms and underdelivers. She has a history of getting in the way of others and helping to end their momentum because it's got to be LOL, Charlotte wins. Anytime they ever try to make her a babyface, see the whole crap with Becky Lynch back a couple years ago, they try to make her look like the good guy here, the good girl, and nobody buys it because she can't do it, because she's one-dimensional as shit, because there's absolutely nothing appealing about wanting to actually cheer for this heifer. She's on the top during a time of declining business. And yet you've got all these fans out there that always sit there and tell me how great she is. What in the hell are you watching? You guys have seen great female talent over the years. You have seen great male talent over the years. At least when it came to Randy Orton. I could say I get why people like him. Because they think he's the anti-Cena. Which was, of course, fucking ignorant as hell. It absolutely was. He was a member of the Fortune of Four along with Batista and Edge. With, just like Cena, really none of the redeeming qualities. He was one of the key members of the Breakfast Club. And his reign of terror on his own, you know, damaged careers and, you know, really put the company in a bad spot. It's not just Cena that helped ruin WWE. He had a pretty good fighting partner there in Randall Keith Orton for years. And you look at Charlotte and it's the same thing. Like every time she's in the picture, they try to pound her into a top spot. You know damn good and well she's not moving that much merch. No matter if other ladies are more talented or have more momentum behind them, it doesn't matter. It's always going to come back to her. She's a master backstage politician, and you know it, and you can see it, and you've seen it play out throughout her career. Like a lot of you now have at least over the past decade 
warmed up to the notion that Randall Keith Orton sucks. Or you say he sucks, but since he's not really being forced or pounded into a top spot as much now uh, consistently, it just doesn't aggravate you or bother you that much. But why doesn't it aggravate you or bother you that you're being sold this bill of goods that Charlotte's great? She's not. Like, you ever watch this botchy bitch's matches? Just because you do moves doesn't mean your match is good. Especially when those moves are botchy, choppy, and sloppy as shit. Whenever she does a freaking moonsault, looks terrible. Her natural selection looks like a goddamn joke. And let's not even get to, oh, I gotta wear my peacocks, my peacocks, my peacocks. Always got to sit there and come out ripping off her dad because, of course, she can't get by on her own merits or her own talents, so you got to latch on to dear old daddy every chance you can, who himself was a raging ripoff of the real original nature boy, Buddy Rogers. But at least he put his own spin on it. At least Ric Flair had redeeming qualities. His daughter has none. Like, every time they try to make her out to be the baby face, you look at her and you want to hate on her. Or you should. He's terrible, man. Like, you really tell me, looking at her matches, that you think they have psychology or storytelling? Like, I think I saw Bubba, Bubba Ray. Like, Bully Ray, excuse me. Excuse me. Like, everybody's entitled to their opinion. It's fun when we disagree. It's fun when we shit talk back and forth. I enjoy it. Maybe some of you don't, but I love it. I love it. The day that everybody absolutely agrees with me is the day I need to stop doing this. Don't get any ideas of thinking you all agree with me just so I can go the fuck away. Because then I'll just double down on crap. But Bully Ray's talking about he doesn't understand why people hate Charlotte Flair. Because she's a great psychologist. She's a great storyteller. She's got charisma. She's got all these imaginary things that Bully Ray cited that she clearly doesn't fucking have. And how appropriate, Mr. Federation Killer himself. You know why I don't watch TNA anymore? Well, now Impact Wrestling. You know why I stopped watching? Because of his bullshit with that stupid Aces and Eight story. Now look at the handiwork of what he did with ROH. I'm sure that went really well, right? Fuck him. Like this whole notion of, well, you can't sit there and say that because she does. Uh, yeah, we can. Because we have eyes, Bully Ray. We can clearly see it. The acting skills are not there. Her presentation is just a gross ripoff. The way she conducts and carries herself is just annoying and irritating as shit and not in a good drawing heat type of way. It's in a X-Pac get the fuck off my TV heat type of way. And even at least X-Pac had a couple of redeeming qualities of which Charlotte Flair has none. She has absolutely none. Now you get people talking about she's the best woman that they have. Really? And people talking about she's as big of a star as anybody in the company. Really? 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 Our standards have dropped this low. And we're going to start putting Charlotte Flair up in the upper echelon and pantheon of women's performers in the wrestling industry? When you really think about it, sit down and think about it, all the time she's had a freaking title pounded on her, how many of those title rings were actually any fucking good? How many of you actually realistically look back at any of them and think, man, that was outstanding, and we'll remove the NXT crap? Because I know we're dealing with the lowest common denominator there. Oh, really? Like, you talk about her great matches, but she was in that triple threat at WrestleMania that sucked. It absolutely sucked. You can blame the man, Becky Lynch, for that. You can blame Ronda Rousey for that. Well, you can certainly as hell blame the one that comes from a wrestling lineage of royalty in Charlotte frickin' Flair and point to her and say, what? You know what? You were so awesome that fans were leaving halfway through the main event. You know why? Because you suck and everybody freaking knows it. Like, who puts a live microphone in front of Charlotte Flair? 
Who looks at her and thinks that this is personality and charisma and star power personified? Really? To me, one of the clear definitions of a star is you notice when they're gone. When Charlotte's gone, I don't notice that she's gone. Or if I do, it's only to remember, hey, it's a good feeling. That bitch ain't here being forced on my damn throat. There's no range. There's no personality. No charisma. No mic skills at all. Matches are just random spots. Several, many of them on a consistent basis. Poorly executed. You know she's botchy as hell. Stop playing. Now you can like her if you want. I don't care. But she sucks. So at least if anything else, can y'all stop acting like she's this great talent or this incredible wrestler? And just because an idiot like Bully Ray says it doesn't make it so and doesn't make it true. Does it? Ah, fuck it. Who knows? Maybe it does anymore. Because our standards have lowered so much when it comes to professional wrestling with both the men and the women that a lot of you that don't know any damn better or have lost your way think that this is greatness now. No, it's mediocrity and suck perfectly suited and situated for today's wrestling world and specifically for today's WWE. And it's a damn shame when I got to sit there and go on Twitter and see people talking about Charlotte Flair and how great she is. What the hell is wrong with you?